Welcome to Undiet Your Coaching Podcast. I'm Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist and creator of the Going to Be on the Food Method. And I'm on a mission to help all coaches undiet their life and their coaching business. Ready? Let's do this. Hello, my dear colleagues, and welcome back. We're going to talk about a hot topic, something that you face every day in your practice, which is rebellious eating. And inside of the non-diet mentorship program, we talk about that a lot. We talk about that in the context of intuitive eating. We talk about that also in the context of health. So I could have titled this episode, Rebellious Healthy Behavior, Rebellious Eating, Rebellious Body Image Behavior. This concept of rebellious behavior is applicable to any part of the non-diet approach that you're coaching. So if you've read the title of the episode, you're probably, okay, tell me exactly what to do. Tell me how to coach rebellious eating or rebellious behavior. And I just want the solution. And I want you to, if that's you, maybe it's not you, but if it is you, I want you to take this moment to recognize this, like, human need for efficiency, human need for getting to the solution right away. And that is normal. That is your primal brain. That is your reptilian brain. That is your prefrontal cortex wanting, in your case as a professional, to get the solution to help your client with rebellious eating. Just sit with that awareness first. And then I want you to bring your intentional thinking back in line and acknowledge that you are a coach, right? And as a coach, our expertise sits within how to coach human behavior, right? Any coaches out there, no matter what your title is, you coach human behavior. That's why we're here. And that human behavior comes from that reptilian brain, that primal brain that wants the most efficient path to get to the relief of a problem, in your case, the problem of your client. But as a coach, we also know that in order to coach a behavior, we must understand first why the behavior is present in our client. And another reminder for you, our clients hire us to resolve a problem. In this case is the rebellious behavior. Trust me, they have tried to resolve it on their own and it hasn't worked. So they're coming to you with the rebellious behavior and they want the solution with it. As a coach, as a professional coach, you know that it's a behavior issue and you know that you need to understand why they're creating this behavior. Because here's a foundation of coaching, all human behavior have a purpose, including rebellious eating. So we're gonna spend the first part, which is the vast majority of this podcast, understanding why our client have the rebellious behavior. That is, as a coach, the most important part of your work. We need to understand rebellious eating, rebellious behavior deeply in order for us to help our client create a new behavior. So let's go at the very high level Rebellion is a refusal of obedience. We resist authority. Rebellious eating is when food or eating are used in order to resist authority. In fact, rebellious eating and even rebellious health behavior is an action created by the brain to affirm one's power, power over their food, over their body, over their existence. 
So rebellious eating is not about the food. The way the brain rebel is through the medium of food, but it's the problem, the reason why rebellious eating happen is not because of the food. And I'm gonna just make sure we're clear on this. When I talk about rebellious eating, I'm talking about overeating, I'm talking about binging, compulsive eating, nighttime eating, out of control eating, even for your more advanced client, the pendulum swing, right? During the process of intuitive eating. Rebellious eating is not about the food. Rebellious health behavior is not about health. It's just a medium that the human brain is using to affirm one's power. Let's do a reminder here again, in case you're new to the podcast, human create behavior because of their feeling. The emotion that the human, your client is experiencing is what ignite the reaction or the behavior. The behavior is not in itself created. It's a reaction to their feelings. Their feelings, just like your feeling, your emotion, all of human's emotion, are ignited, are created by our thoughts. That perspective that the human brain creates by looking at the environment, right? That's what thoughts are. Thoughts are your brain analysis of your environment. It creates an opinion. That opinion gets communicated to the rest of your body through your emotion. And then the rest of the body reacts to that emotion with a behavior. In the case of rebellious eating, rebellious health behavior, it's a behavior that is created from mostly that rebellious emotion, that anger, that resentment emotion that your client is experiencing because of the food rule, diet culture, the thin ideal. It's all kinds of thoughts floating in your client's brain that will create the reaction of rebellious eating. Now, every client has a different thinking process that creates the emotion that will ignite the rebellious behavior. I can think of clients that what I call the early stage client that come in to us because they're, they were just a few weeks before on a, some kind of eating plan, some kind of diets, some kind of wellness culture regiment that they were rebelling against. They were rebelling against, we'll call it the plan they were on. Right? So their desire to adhere to the plan was to achieve a health status or a size of a body. And for whatever reason, they're done with that. They don't want to be on some kind of a plan of a diet anymore and they come to you. So their rebellious behavior is coming from them rebelling against the plan. You also have your, I'll give you two examples. I could spend the whole podcast talking about different clients' case, but I'll give you the other side of the spectrum, which is perhaps a more advanced student on the journey of, in this case, intuitive eating, who has given up dieting, the planned stuff, perhaps months or years ago, they've read the intuitive eating book, and they are practicing intuitive eating on their own, and they're in the pendulum shift phase and they've been there for months and they finally they're like okay this thing is not working on my own I'm gonna go out and hire you as a coach to help me get out of the pendulum swing and the reason why they're quote-unquote stuck in the pendulum swing is because of the mental restriction they're imposing themselves right the thought of okay by now I should be eating more vegetables. 
Why am I not eating more vegetable? What's wrong with me? I keep eating all the brownies. Every time I bring brownies in the house, I eat the whole pan. It's been like that for months. What is wrong with me? That's the narrative that's happening in their brain. And that's what they're rebelling against. So in that case of the more advanced client, they're not rebelling against the plan. They're rebelling against their own restriction, their own thoughts about restriction. So here's what I want you to take away. Rebellious behavior, rebellious eating is about fighting for our autonomy and agency. Humans are designed to be autonomous individual as adults. Now, everything that I'm talking about today is true for all age group, but the solution is applicable to adults or late teenager, like 16, 17, 18, where the individual is capable of making decision on their own. So the solution I'm gonna to present to you today is for an adult group, right? Because the first 15 years of our life, we're in the process of learning to make decisions of our own. We still need our guides and parents around us. So the lens through which I'm going to give you the solution from this moment is for adults. And the solution is the same that we're talking about any kind of rebellious behavior, right? We have to acknowledge that as adult, as human, we want to determine our life. And our body has all the tool to determine, in the case of food, what we should be eating. And our body has all the tools to be able to determine which health behavior we should engage into. We have that within us. We have this innate wisdom within us. I don't need to sell you on this because you know that as a non-diet coach. What we need to help our client with is first awareness of that, that we have all that we need within us to make all the decision around food and health and how to tap into that wisdom. Because of the fact that all humans want to be autonomous and we have everything we need to be autonomous until they give up the control, the adherence to external guidance that it is through a food plan, a wellness plan, someone else telling them what to do, which require them to deny their innate wisdom. As long as they continue to believe that and engage in that external wisdom being more powerful than their own, they will continue to engage in rebellious behavior. And I also want you to note that perhaps they have engaged in intuitive eating, they've claimed back their power with food, but this rebellious behavior is now showing up in other parts of their life. What I have seen over the years of doing this work is for my more quote unquote advanced student or client, they will go through intuitive eating and sometimes it will work on their own. And then they turn to healthism or wellness behavior in a way to express their rebellion against themselves. So they just move the chain of power from food to wellness. That happens more often than you can imagine. If you get your client from the base where they have not done any of the work, the good news is, and that's a great selling point for you, is that you'll be able to help them solve this at the base and they'll have a life transformation in all other aspects of their life. But if they're done this work on their own and you get them in the health sphere, but they're an intuitive eater, but they're still obsessing about health. And recently, so I'm recording this in 2022, and a trend that I've seen with People, particularly I'm 47, so people that are a generation later than me, is this need for control over alcohol. Sobriety is becoming trendy. And so what I have seen is people being intuitive eater 
and then moving themselves into this control of alcohol, even though they're not alcoholics, like they're just like, they're jumping in into the tread to still apply control to themselves because they still believe fundamentally, and this is what we'll get to the second part of the solution, they are not good enough. Their self-esteem, their worthiness hasn't been built in the process of becoming intuitive eaters, so just shifted that need for external validation and control to sobriety. Just an observation, but something to be aware of if you're working with people who've recently engaged into sobriety without being people who were distinctively known or aware of being alcoholic. So I'll leave that on the side and I'll come back to the later part of the solution, the second phase of the solution. So first phase is understanding that we're rebelling against a plan against restriction because we have everything within us to be autonomous and we have this primal innate desire to be autonomous, to have agency over our life. And as long as we maintain external control, we will constantly remain in rebellion behavior. The second part of what we need to do with our client is helping them understand and for us as a coach to understand why they believe that they need external control. Right? What is the thoughts, the belief that they have that cause them to go externally to them to control, to know better than what their innate wisdom is? And this is where we fall into the world of beliefs. One of the main reasons why people go externally for control and for advice and validation is because they believe they, as I said earlier, they aren't good enough. They aren't good enough to know what decision to make with food, with health, with their body. And they fundamentally don't know they have power and they don't want to use it because they have a belief system that they aren't good enough. Examining that belief system is the way through to solving, quote unquote, permanently rebellion behavior. We need to get to the source, which is the belief system that our client has in regards to the area of their life where the rebellion happened. Now, when I say where the rebellion happened, where there's the belief system, an example around food is one thing. But as you dig, you will most often find that, yeah, they have false beliefs about food, mainly from diet culture or wellness culture, but also they have belief about themselves as a human making decision in the context of food. So it's not just about food, it's about them as a human being. And what they're confusing is that, they're confusing, sorry, their opinion of themselves versus facts. Very few people understand the difference between facts and opinion. So let me give you a, a, an example in the context of food. A fact is people need to eat in order to live. That's a fact. But what to eat, how to eat, when to eat it, these are thoughts that our body creates in order for us to engage with food. And these is individual to each one of us. When you're in diet culture, your thoughts about food are, I need to only eat these food. I need to eat only at this time of the day. I need to eat this way. I need to chew 50 times each bites of food. Like you have all kinds of quote unquote rules, which are only thoughts. They're not factual information. Same thing when it comes to body image, right? You have a human body. That's a fact. But that a fat body is bad and a thin body is better, 
That's an opinion. That's a thought. But your client will come into you thinking it's a fact. Fat is bad. So you need to work with your client, not at the behavior level. You need to work with them at the belief level. Now, you need to, you first, understand the difference between thoughts and facts. You need to understand how the behavior is created. You need to understand this whole coaching model, cognitive behavior therapy, in order to understand your client and show it to them. Show it to them that their belief system in the case of food, in the case of their own value personally in the world, right? If they're thinking they're not good enough, that's their value system about them. You need to show it to them. This is why these are the beliefs that are creating the thoughts, the emotion, and then the rebellious behavior. And then they need to make the decision, do I want to change my beliefs about food? Do I want to change how I view myself in the world? Do I want to change my opinion of myself? Because it's not true that I'm not good enough. That's a belief that I have acquired by being exposed to diet culture, to patriarchy, to any other system of oppression that your client have been exposed to based on their marginalized identity. This will be different. They have acquired the belief that they aren't good enough. But that's not true, right? All humans are born worthy and valuable. And it's the conditioning, the conditioned mind that over time lead us to have this false belief about ourselves. So the work or the solution is to unlearn, to uncondition the mind in order for us to stop fighting ourselves and fighting our power that's within us. That's the whole process of intuitive eating. That's what Evelyn wrote. Step one to 10 is how to unlearn, right? Our conditioning around food. But the coaching of that, that's a separate island, right? That's what I've been talking to you up to now is how to coach the intuitive eating process. We need to get to the belief system. We need to expose the belief system. We need to expose the thoughts that are creating the feeling of the rebellious behavior, whatever be it binging or not taking care of themselves, what is causing that behavior and then helping them create a new belief and believe the new belief. That's our work as coaches. Our work as coaches is to do that first part, understand what is, present it to the client, get consent, and then reprogram the mind to the new belief, the new thoughts. And that phase of coaching is typically between 60 to 70% of your coaching session with your client. Let's say you work on a three-month coaching package. That phase of coaching the client into the new behavior, the new thinking, processing their emotion, that's 60 to 75% of your session. So that's probably six to eight sessions out of 12 is just keep bringing them back to the new belief, the new thinking, processing their emotions so they can acquire the new behavior permanently. And your job is to stay with them until what I call they have the behavior. The have phase is the last phase of coaching where they actually have the behavior. That's rebellious eating. That's rebellious health behavior. Whatever rebellious behavior your clients are paying you to help them resolve, that's the process. That's the coaching process of that problematic they're presenting to you. And I'm telling you, what I just taught you here is applicable to anything. That's how we coach our client out of rebellious behavior. If you want to know how to coach at that level and how to coach at the belief and thought level, that's what we teach within the non-diet mentorship is we teach you how to coach first, right? The coaching phase, and then we apply it to intuitive eating. We try it to body image. 
we learn to apply coaching to these processes in order to help our clients in a coaching process that will permanently change our behavior. Now, if you're a, I don't know, a dietitian, a health coach who currently doesn't know how to coach because you're giving people what I call protocol, that's more consulting, right? So if you are a giver of how to's, of plans and changing habits, that's consulting. That is not coaching. What I've walked you through is coaching versus just telling people what to do. If you are not aware of that, I would recommend you go back to the beginning of season six, where I talk about how to coach client through weight loss. I go in a lot more depth about the difference between coaching and consulting. So this is it for today. I hope this was helpful in understanding how to coach rebellious eating. I love you and I'll see you on the next podcast. Ready to shed diet culture from your practice and help more clients do the same? Awesome. We've got free resources to get you started. Simply go to stephaniedozier.com forward slash pro series, all in one word, and access our three free training classes that are currently available. We also have a free PDF guide to intuitive eating and article about the non-diet approach. We also offer a variety of paid programs throughout the year to support you in your journey to undiet your coaching practice. Join us at stephaniedoze.com forward slash pro series, and I'll see you on the other side.